Hello everybody. Uh, I'm here to talk about a new board that we're releasing for Donkey Car. Uh, it's this little board right here. Uh, we've nicknamed it the Sombrero uh, to go along with the donkey. Um, and uh, it integrates a lot of capabilities uh, people have been asking for for a while. Uh, and I'd love to just go through those with you uh, and then show you how to assemble one. So the board itself <clears throat> directly connects to uh, a battery and to the ESC uh, using XT60 connectors. Um, these are really common connectors. They're found on almost all LiPo batteries, um, uh, so it's, they're relatively easy to find. Uh, your car probably does not have XT60s, um, so you'll have, to, you'll have to solder on a new connector uh, to make that work. Uh, it's got your throttle and steering uh, connectors up here on the top. <clears throat> um, it also powers the Raspberry Pi from the main battery, so you don't need the USB battery anymore, which is really, really nice. Uh, the cable routing is nice in that the cables um, just route directly up from the battery and from the ESC, uh, which makes it really nice, uh, kind of clean design with, with kind of very few wires hanging around. Uh, one of the other... <clears throat> Pretty nice features on this is that it has a power switch, which is a master power switch, uh, which actually switches the entire power of the battery. Uh, so it drives a, MOS, a MOSFET, um, which is, you can think of just as an electronic switch that uh, that turns off and turns on the power both to the ESC uh, as well as to the Raspberry Pi. So it's fully up and running and booted right now, uh, and it's working just fine. <clears throat> Um, it also has a few other little features. It has two uh, user-controllable LEDs in addition to the hardwired LED. The hardwired LED just says that the power is on and it is, in fact, powered. Um, also, uh, we, we, we route through several of the um, GPIO ports as well as extra PWM pins uh, in case you want to put a motor on there or extra servos or something. Uh, it makes it relatively easy to do that. And then finally... Um, over here in the far corner uh, is uh, um, the I squared C connector, so you could actually connect um, another another um, board, let's say a display, uh, or potentially an IMU. It's a pretty flexible little design, um, and really kind of designed to work well with uh, with the existing Raspberry Pi uh, and Donkey Car design. Um, one thing you might notice is. The bottom case right here has a hole big enough um, to fit uh, those two batteries. That's a modification to the plastic design. Uh, this is already up on Thingiverse, so if you want to start uh, looking at downloading it uh, and printing it, uh, go ahead. Uh, you'll have to print the bulk version for now uh, because, unfortunately, I haven't updated the other version yet. Um, so it's called the bulk build, bulk build version. All right, well, with that, let's go figure out how to... Uh, solder this together because it comes mostly assembled, but not completely assembled. All right, so here's the parts you need to make one of these sombreros. Um, you need the board itself, of course. Uh, you need two um, uh, little headers, and these are for the steering and throttle. Uh, and then you need actually three XT60 connectors. You might be saying, why? why do I actually need three? Well, these two go in the board, and this one... Um, actually, it's just a spare in case you need to uh, put one of these on your on your car. Uh, so this can connect to your ESC and upgrade your car uh, for um, for being able, being able to be used with this with this board. Um, if your car already has one of these, awesome. You have nothing to do there. You can just hang on to that or throw it away or do whatever you want to do with it. Um, one of the biggest problems with soldering these through hole components is holding them to the board. Um, there are lots of different techniques, and you can look up online uh, all these different techniques. Um, my preferred approach is just to use super glue. Um, so I can find the super glue. Oops. <clears throat> so what I typically do um, is just take uh, and stick a tiny little dab of super glue. Um, right here. It's really easy to get too much on there. And I'll be 
you put a tiny little dab, stick this in, and uh, it will um, dry on there, and then you can just solder it from the other side. Um, now, with these little XT60s, it's actually a little trickier. Um, so you have to get the right one uh, into the right hole. Um, so the one that has uh, that is the male version, um, which has the two little pins coming out of it, actually has a little shroud around it. But then you can see that it has it's the male connector inside. Uh, goes into the battery side, um, and the female version, which looks like that, goes into the other side. Now, one of the things to be aware of with these these connectors um, is that the um, the ESC, the one on the ESC side, the female connector, is actually has slightly smaller posts. These posts are slightly smaller than these. So you can't actually stick them, you can't stick uh, the battery side one in the wrong hole, but you can stick the um, uh, the ESC side one in the wrong hole. So just be really careful about that and make sure you get it right. Um, so again, I just like simplicity. So I just use a little bit of super glue, stick it on there and put it together. Uh, and we'll go to the, get to the soldering here in just a minute. All right. <clears throat> so now these connectors are all stuck on there with super glue, which is great. Uh, now I can uh, go ahead and uh, start trying to um, solder these together. So <clears throat> to get started with soldering, I typically use a nice, you know, kind of clamp setup. Um, I'll just say that the you know, like the greatest unsolved problem in electrical engineering is how to hold your work in order to solder it. Um, and uh, um, I'm <laughs> have several tools to help me with that, but it's still hard, even for people that have done it a lot. So um, you can see that I've got several things to solder. I've got these two little connectors right here. Uh, to do that, to solder those, I'm going to actually, and I'll just focus on my little thing, I'm going to set my soldering station up to 350. If you don't have a soldering station, um, yeah, I'll have to make do uh, with just normal soldering iron, uh, which is a little harder, but 350 is about the temperature you want to use for these big, uh, these big conductors on, uh, um, on, these, on these connectors. So... These take quite a bit of heat, um, but of course not so much that you damage the board. Um, oh, my super glue came loose. I might just do this one instead. Um, but not so much that you damage the board or the um, uh, or the um, or the connector. And the connector actually can be damaged. Um, and you have to sort of work it around. And you can tell, and it's hard to tell in this video, but if with the um, with the solder, you really have to um, heat up both the connector and the board. Otherwise, you get what's called a cold solder joint. But if you do connect, do both, you get this really, really strong, um, mechanically uh, great connection, like that one just was. Um, and uh, literally the the board will break in half before the connector comes off. Not that that's what you want, but uh, um, that's how firmly attached it is. And as you can tell, it's actually a little bit hard to solder. This took me a few attempts, which I'll show you in my failed attempts later, uh, to get this on there. This is, I would say, not the simplest soldering challenge. Um, so if you're new to soldering, you may want to ask for some help from a friend or something. Um, so that's one of the big connectors. Um, it's hard to tell. I'll try and show you here. You can tell that it's really kind of all the way around. It's, um, it kind of uses capillary action. And it just sucks the solder right down into the components. And it works really well. Now, 
I'm kind of a stickler for not overheating components. So I actually turned mine down, my, um, uh, my, um, my um, soldering iron down before doing the rest of the parts, um, down to about 275. Uh, and the reason for that is that solder actually melts at 187 degrees Celsius. So this is kind of just a little bit above the melting temperature. And uh, see here, I'm heating up both the board and the pins. All right, so now it's soldered. Um, and it mostly looks good. Um, most of the solder joints are pretty, pretty good. Although actually I'm just noticing some of those actually are not good solder joints. I'll have to fix those in a minute. Um, uh, but these solder joints for these things are really strong and no cold solders, which is really great. They're also flush to the board, which is also great. Um, my first one, I kind of screwed up a little bit and they're off the board a little bit. This is an easy mistake to make. Um, I promise you it still works. This board still works uh, just fine. Um, and if it happens, all you'll have to deal with is kind of the ongoing embarrassment of every time you look at your car, realizing how bad you soldered these parts together. Um, so that's about it. Um, uh, and also just one kind of errata. I, I said it was 187 degrees uh, Celsius is what the solder melts at. It's actually 183. So for those of you taking notes, uh, make sure you uh, adjust accordingly. Um, and uh, thanks so much. Uh, hopefully this helped. And put any questions you have in the comments or just reach out in the Donkey Slack community and the hardware channel. Thank you so much. Bye.